around the issues that all challenges Kenya and many others. Challenges for climate change in the United States and for people around the world. have 5,000 troops in Somalia, because equally that is our responsibility. The high ICC, the way it's being exercised, and, uh, and it's that simple. Like you, I believe the future is going to be won by countries that unleash the full potential and equipment and the like to Haiti, and so it's a logical thing. And you have a first-rate ca capable of corruption re reforms to promote yeah. democratic values to bind our nation. I am the president of Kenya. It's me to make that decision. Thanks you, everybody. This concludes the press conference. Thanks, everybody. The United States has long championed in international financial institutions that provide low-cost concessional resources to the poorest developing countries, including from the IMF. To that end, my administration helped design and establish the IMF's new initiative that provides low-cost funding to, for countries that are taking steps to enhance their resilience. Important partners in Africa have the capital they need to ensure they have the capital they need to invest in their futures. We heard them, and we stand with them. Now, that's why we've worked with Congress to enable the United States to make available in the coming weeks 
up to $21 billion in new lending resources to the IMF trust fund that provides concessional lending to the poorest countries. It's a little like, uh, you know, uh, having to go when you're in debt, having to go and find someone to help you out. That's what this is about. We believe supporting friends in, in this partnership is happy uh, — we're happy to do our part. And look, we've also doubled our commitment to the uh, IDA. And I'm proud the United States is the biggest donor of the IDA in this cycle. I'm proud to be working with — alongside with Kenya to support robust financing and policy packages that are going to help the most vulnerable countries address their investment needs. There's debt and there's growth. And you can't — you got to deal with the debt before you deal with the growth. And so we're — we're trying to use international lending organizations to be able to provide that capability so people can grow. That's what it's about. Mr. President, we will also be having the opportunity to discuss the investment opportunities, trade, and hopefully we will be able to persuade the United States to renew the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act that gives Africa the opportunity for access to market so that we can create more jobs we can create more wealth, and we can spread prosperity across our continent. And hopefully also, we will conclude on our strategic partnership 
on uh, our strategic trade and investment partnerships that will give us the opportunity in Kenya to work with companies in the United States and to build greater synergy around our continent on matters to do with trade, investment, especially as we put together the Africa Continental Free Trade Area and twin it with the United States as we discussed at the Africa Leaders Summit last year, giving us an opportunity to build greater partnership between the continent of Africa and the United States. Mr. President, I know that our menu of discussion is broad and wide. And I am confident that under your leadership, we will be able to build a freer, a healthier, and a much more prosperous Kenya, United States, and for people around the world. Thank you very much. Ninety percent of Kenya's electricity comes from clean energy. Ninety percent. That's worth an applause. Over one million homes are powered by wind energy alone. That's worth an applause, too. <laughs> An historic Africa Green Industrialization Initiative, which you launched last year, is poised to create similar results in so many other nations, particularly in the continent. Across the region, Kenya and America are driving a race to the top with investments that we have and high standards for workers, technology, and environment. And we're working to ensure debt doesn't leave these critical investments and crucial investments out of reach for low- and middle-income countries. Around the world, Kenya and America are also standing united against the terror of ISIS and Al-Shabaab perpetrate in East Africa, that they continue to perpetrate in East Africa. The aggression that Russia is inflicting on Ukraine, the violence that has toppled too many democracies across both our regions. And today, as we begin the next decade of our partnership, we've launched a new initiative to bring our countries, companies, and communities closer together, because the past is our proof that we are stronger and the world is safer when Kenya and the United States work together. Let me close with this. We stand at an inflection point in history where the decisions we make now will determine the course of our future for decades to come. Today, I'm as optimistic and hopeful as I was those years ago when Kenya patriots raised that new flag high in that midnight sky. Because Kenya and the United States stand together, committed to each other, committed to our people, and committed to building a better world, one of greater opportunity, dignity, security, and liberty for all Americans, for all Kenyans. God bless our partnership, and may God bless our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> President Ruto, Mrs. Ruto, and your three lovely daughters who are here to my left, <laughs> Nice. Welcome, 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 welcome. And all the distinguished guests, on behalf of myself and Jill, Vice President and Second Gentleman and the American people, it's an honor to welcome you to the White House to celebrate 60 years, 60 years of partnership between Kenya and the United States. At a stroke of midnight, that's worth applause. At the stroke of midnight on December 12, 1963, the world changed. Many Americans and many people around the world watched with great hope and great anticipation as hundreds of thousands of Kenyans came together, raised a new flag, declared their freedom, and gave life to a new nation. Ladies and gentlemen, that new democracy, that new democracy is enduring and enduring. It was a moment that forever connected our two nations. For while we may have been divided by distance, we were united by the same democratic values. 
I saw this during my first trip to Kenya as a young senator at the height of the Cold War and watched our governments stand as one and prevail against communism. I saw it when I returned years later as vice president and spoke to students committed to upholding the principles of transparency, justice, and accountability that lie at the heart of our democracies. And I see it every day as president as our two proud democracies continue to draw from the power of the people and the strength of our diversity to write the next chapter in our partnership. Together, the United States and Kenya are working to deliver on the challenges that matter most to our people's lives, health security, economic security, cyber security, and climate security. I want to thank President Biden for extending an invitation to me to undertake this state visit as a sign of friendship and partnership and collaboration between two countries that share common values, values of freedom, democracy, rule of law, equality, and inclusivity. We are very proud democratic nation. And today, as we celebrate our past, we are optimistic about our future. That I, by undertaking this state visit, we will have the opportunity to discuss and to have a conversation about building global partnership and leadership around the issues that pose challenges regionally, globally, and in countries like Kenya and many others. Challenges of climate change, challenges of insecurity, challenges around debt distress. And today we have an occasion to build synergies, to build partnerships that will not only solve our current problems, but also to build a future that is much more promising, much more pro prosperous, a fairer, a freer, a healthier, and a much more prosperous future. I am confident. I am confident, Mr. President, that the partnership between the United States of America and Kenya will give us the solutions that the world so seriously needs. And we will be discussing a range of issues from peace and security in our region, recognizing the heavy lifting Kenya is doing in supporting peace and security efforts in the Horn of Africa, in the Great Lakes region. And I want to say, Mr. President, we value the support, the friendship, and the collaboration the United States has given Kenya and our region to make sure that we undertake our responsibilities in securing our region. Gangs and criminals do not have nationalities. They have no religion. They have no language. Their language is one, okay. to deal with them firmly, decisively, within the parameters of the law. And that's why we are building a coalition of nations beyond Kenya and the U.S., many who are making contribution towards the MSS force in Haiti. 
to secure that country and to break the back of the gangs and the criminals that have visited untold suffering in that country. On DRC, the AU, the East African community, and Kenya are seized with that matter. I've just told you that Kenya had a thousand troops in Haiti. We now have another 800, not in Haiti, but in DRC. We now have another 800 troops from SADC. We are going to be having a meeting of the East African community. I did send my minister of, uh, my foreign minister to Kinshasa. They had a conversation. And shortly, we will be looking at how to begin the dialogue process under the Nairobi process because we believe there is no military solution to what is going on in DRC. But instead, dialogue should be able to give us the necessary momentum and outcomes that would sell the matters in, in Eastern DRC. So both the AU, the East African community, and Kenya as a country are seized of that matter. We know that the humanitarian crisis in Eastern DRC has displaced close to seven million people. And I want to thank the United States of America for stepping in with humanitarian support for that region because it is a collaboration of different countries in different ways to deal with that situation. The rest of us are committing troops. We are committing uh, our, deploying our infrastructure to facilitate the resolution of the matters in DRC.